Yes, guys, welcome back. Episode 21 of the Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. And this is a solo episode. And for those of you guys new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I do a solo episode every single week. And I also do a guest episode every single week. And I cannot wait to serve you guys in this energy today. We're talking today about the small things, the small shifts that are right now showing up in our world that are actually massive changes leading us into our spiritual awakening in deeper senses. And if, if this is right now a potency moving through our fields right now that is desiring us to step in and take these small actions. And I give you tons of examples in this podcast episode. I riff off with you. I'm leaning into this potency because I know and understand the dynamics of what this is going to do for your life when you decide to step in. So all I'm doing is urging you today while you listen to open up your heart and start to get real with yourself of where you're avoiding things, where maybe you're not stepping in and why are you procrastinating potentially through this mechanism? Because in that is the potency of a dynamic for you. And it is literally guys, one of the biggest game changers that is about to change your evolution and ascension energy and your pathway on earth. If you decide to make this shift and fully own it. So I cannot wait to serve you guys episode 21, Light Warriors Unleashed podcast. Enjoy. And by the way, too, guys, real quick before you jump in, if you feel any parts of this and you're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense, please take a snapshot of this, share it out on social, tag me on Instagram. In the show notes, you'll find my Instagram and you can go and follow me there as well. But I want to spread the message of this podcast as far as I can get, because so many people right now are at this precipice and they are asking for help. They're desiring to know they want to move through and I need your help to get this out in the world. So I hold space for that as well. Okay, go on in and enjoy the episode. We are doing this. Oh my gosh. I am so excited today to step into this conversation with you because I have been feeling the pulse of this energy moving through the collective right now at this very moment of time. So whether you're listening to it on the day this launches or within the first week that it launches or six months down the road, this right now is an energetic field moving through your awareness, moving through your next levels of your spiritual advancement or evolution. And I can't wait to talk about this today, about all of the small things. And I feel like, you know, I just remember <laughs> the story that when I started dating one of my ex-boyfriends. I would go over to his place and he would have this little uh, book on his toilet that was like, remember the small things. And I can't remember the exact verbiage. Like, and for those of you guys that know me well enough, um, I paraphrase a lot, not because I don't want to give credit to things, but I don't remember a lot of the details of stuff. I don't remember the details of like what the name of the song was or even who the artist was, but I can remember the vibration of what part of the music hit my soul, you know? So I remember the essence of things. And even like when I'm quoting people, I paraphrase, I paraphrase the quote and not like I want to not give credit to them. It just doesn't hit my, in my awareness, the way that it is exactly, I think because it's all energy, right? Everything is energy for all of us. So, and I'm pretty sure that that's why it shows up that way in my field to be able to move it through. But I remember this book and it's about like the small things. And at the time, I wasn't in the awareness, obviously, that I hold today. I wasn't in that space of holding the vibration I hold today, of all the truth that runs through my palate today. I get confirmation, whew, goosebumps down my body. I get confirmation and confirmation and confirmation all the time. Literally what comes in channeled, something I speak to a like one-to-one -one client. And then literally like a day later, I'll see somebody that I really respect that I maybe mentor with in certain programs or in their offers or their communities. And they'll be saying the exact same thing. And I'll be like, shit, like I am channeling literally this purity of light coming through. And it's just like potent moving through the energy field. So I never lived this life before, at least consciously, maybe underneath it all, which is most likely truth if that's dropping in for me to serve it to you today, maybe underneath it all, I always knew but I didn't know consciously as a human in this experience, what it all meant, you know, until I, until I really started to do some personal development work, which then opened me up to be able to hold more, see more, ask for different things, and then be in the awareness when the things dropped in to help serve my next level of energy. 
But why I mentioned this to you today about this little book on the back of a toilet was because it was about the small things. And at the time I consciously understood, you know, from that human perspective, yeah, it's like the small moments of time, the small kisses, the like the small things about me picking up your son at school or the small things about, you know, me helping that woman cross the street or all the small things. It's that small ripple of vibration that moves through the collective world. Now, I didn't understand what it meant in our spiritual advancement or evolution at the time. And now, like literally over this last week, this has been showing up so dominant in my field that I needed to create a podcast on it so that this ripple effect could get into the ethers and get into your hands because a lot of you are at this precipice of change and it's going to take one small movement done over and over and over and over again for you to make that shift out of that dynamic or into that learning or pulling that root out of that challenge that you're within one small movement one small movement now it doesn't mean that the small movement doesn't hold a lot of energy it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy to shift into this because we are right now at the cusp of one of the biggest pillars of our learning as a soul in this world. The biggest pillars that we hold right now is right here in our energetic field, showing us a light. The biggest, like one of the biggest ones, we have major pillars and I've talked about this before. And if you've listened to podcasts before, or you've been to my YouTube, I just did a free training on like Akashic Records. You can go to my YouTube. I'll link up the video link in the show notes for this podcast. Go and listen to that because I talk about it more in depth in that dynamic, but we are at this precipice. And for some of us, this precipice is one small change. So for me, let me give you guys an example. For me right now, I am and and have been this whole life. And since I started working with my spiritual mentor 14 years ago, like literally I'm about to close out the 14th year cycle inside of this space right now, this year, like this month, like like literally in like two weeks um, of working with her, it was, it's just so interesting to see how this is all showing up and how it's all coming together. Not surprising me at all, but she mentioned to me in one of my readings from my guides. So back in the day when I used to work with her, I go see her every month and every month she would channel a reading for me from my guides. Um, and yes, apparently I have this capacity to do this kind of work and I do it more verbally instead of actually writing it out. But maybe this will be something that I integrate in some of my offers. Once I get my one-to-one page up and once people can just go there and see how to work with me in different dynamics, one-to-one, I digress. So it is a whole other conversation. However, in one of my readings, one year, one month, whatever it was, they mentioned that one of my main lessons in life in this world right now is worthiness and money. And both of them are tied together in a certain vibration where I watched my parents growing up hustle for money almost struggle a little bit to maintain a certain quality of life that they desired, especially when I was younger and having two kids, I can understand the dynamic, uh, especially kids like us that wanted to be involved in things. And I hold a certain vibration of energy within me that I want to go on experiences. I want to live life. I do not want to be diminished by dynamics of monetary things, by limits and money. I choose to want to do a life that is connected. So I imagine that as a child, that same vibration moved through my body. Let's go to the park. Let's go to that concert. I want to go to that like convenience store to buy this. I want to go to that carnival and all that stuff. And we were limited in that fluidity of lifestyle. So I grew up in an environment that already was limiting in prosperity and not because my parents didn't want more. They only have a certain level of knowledge, just like all of us, right? We only have a certain level of knowledge. We only come to earth and well, okay, let's say this again. We come to earth knowing all of the vibrations, but then our environments and parents and teachers and friends and all that dynamic condition us to be in a certain box of energy, okay? So it's not good or bad. It's just part of our process and part of it is. Now we have parents that are awakened that are helping their kids actually evolve and step into this space and own it and be in it right at young ages. And I'm watching these videos start to happen. And um, one of the women that is in a one-to-one container with me, her soul's mission is to really help these children and help the moms understand 
these children in the world. Like that's her mission on earth. And she shared a video yesterday on Instagram about from a mother speaking about us not having to conform and keep our children in boxes is our children are meant to learn through their experience. Like her son who's under two years old was washing dishes in the sink because he was learning how to do that. We don't have to diminish the light within them. They can hold a capacity and yeah, their bodies are smaller, but they can't get it and understand this as they move through life, right? And it's not good or bad. And if you're listening to this and you're like, fuck, I like parented my kids this way. Seriously, do not go into shame and guilt and all that shit judgment on yourself that's not warranted or needed. We're, we're shining a light on this right now. And at this moment of time, you get to make a choice to choose to change right now, period. Okay. So in my world, one of my main lessons, now I've got a few of them, but this is the one that's showing up dominantly now worthiness around money, being able to charge what I'm worth, being able to see the impact. Like I, I work through this conversation consistently all the time and I get triggered by people who are not potent in their energy field and may make more money a month than I do doing shit that's surface level. Okay. And it pisses me off because you can tell I'm getting charged. It pisses me off. And I'm just like, fuck, it's that fucker. You know, I say that with love and light. <laughs> can be making that kind of money and she's so surface level, what the fuck is my problem? Okay, so that conversation runs through my field consistently and it has. Like guys, I used to charge $350 a month for coaching and you had unlimited access to me and you got calls every week. And most of the time I would drive to your location. This was back when I did that kind of stuff. And I'm like looking at it going, the amount of change and potency I created in those relationships without even knowing I was always chasing the money back then because of the fact that I didn't feel worthy to hold more money. Now, I've been doing a lot of work on this. I am in collectives and communities with mentors holding space in this because I needed an awareness to this dynamic. And I'm at a pivotal state of this pillar in my world right now where this pillar is about to be checkmarked. And this pillar is about to be like in the past eye, right? And I'm right there at that cusp and precipice, but it's taking this one small movement that's left, this one small movement that's left to move it through, not avoiding. <laughs> and that might be easy for some of you. You're like, well, why don't you just pull up your bank statements every week? Why don't you drop into that training every single week? I watched it happen last night. So I am in a 22 day wealth initiation and the training we were going through is body-based budgeting. Okay, body-based budgeting. Anything with the word budget, I want to avoid. And I'm being super transparent right now with you guys because I really want you to feel this in your field. And you can count on me to be transparent because through this, some of you may be learning. <laughs> Yay for us, okay? The avoider energy. And I was like, fuck the budgeting, right? This dropped into our field on Saturday was the training. So yesterday was a Sunday. So I was only one day behind, okay? So I'm owning that. But I definitely, I could have done this on Saturday. I could have held it. I, my energy could have held it. I had time. It's not like I was doing all these other things that were avoiding it. It was like, I just purposely chose not to. Um, I, but I did clear out my emails, which was an amazing thing and got them down to 44 instead of the 15,000 that were in my email inbox. And I have been moving through clearing clutter um, to avoid apparently money. So it's, it's interesting. Now I do well, guys, like I have a flow that consistently comes into my world every single month. Like the, it's not a challenge that way, but when I'm being called to amplify my light and step into more impact and go out and make more of an impact in light, that repercussion, quote unquote, is a monetary repercussion. It's more money coming in. And if I can't hold it and I'm avoiding it, I can't make my impact. So I am very well aware of this conversation because I have it all the time with my clients too. And I have it moving through capacity. I taught a masterclass this year called capacity. How can we hold more when we're not doing the work to move the energy through? And a lot of us have these desires in our world that we desire more. We desire more connection, more love, more energy, more money, whatever it is, but we're not doing the work to be able to hold more, right? So I'm at this precipice. And the avoider energy is dominant right there. And I know that it, what it's going to take to shift this is shining a light on it every day. And if I feel, because I have a conscious awareness, guys, I'm pretty good at this. Like I, I have done a lot of work, like 14 years later is a lot of work 
a lot of awareness. And yeah, some of those years I fucking floated around and, you know, pretended to do the work. Okay. And I will own that every single day of the week. But now I live in Costa Rica. I don't have all the distractions that I used to have. Like even, I don't even have any animals other than the Tico cats that come and visit me, but technically they're not sleeping in here anymore. Jack, my Tico cat, I call him Jack, is gone for the night somewhere. I'm like, okay, cool. They come in in the morning. I feed them both. I'm sure I'm going to be having kittens around here soon because they're about two and a half weeks old, I feel. And once they can start to really walk, I think mom's going to bring them over to eat with her. So I may have more cats, but they don't live here. There's not a responsibility there. I live in a house that is pretty much segregated from most of life. Although I can walk down the street and I'm back in like the main part of where I live. Um, I have no, like, I don't have a relationship Um, socially. Yeah. I meet some friends here and there, but I literally have never ever in my whole entire life had more availability to step in and do the work now than I've ever had distractions and all that stuff. So I know that I claimed this yesterday. I claimed it. I have the strategy. I know the budget. Now it's not really like a budget budget that I'm working within because I don't believe in the limitations of that, but I believe in having the structure that serves our next level for us to step into. I have it all in play. I know exactly what has to happen. And I'm even going to put in a pulse point in my day that says, are you avoiding? So that I can bring it into my field and awareness. It's a small thing. Yet, it is massive in the movement of change within my world. Massive. So I want to ask you this question right now. And I'm going to give you guys some more examples to this because some of you guys are working in different fields, which is amazing. You're not in the field of awareness that I am in when it comes to avoiding money. Okay, that's not your jam. You're, some of you are like, fuck, I don't avoid money. I'm like, da, 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 da. Coolio, right? We all have our own pathway and movement through. But for some of us, we are up against these small movements. Some of you are up against the movement of moving your body. Your body needs to purge energy. It needs to move it through. As you continue to clear, as you continue to ascend, as you continue to get clarity in your mission and take action in your mission and own that truth and own that power, your body needs to move. It has to move through the body. We have four bodies. We've talked about this before. And if you do not know this, there's four bodies, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. If you're doing all the work on the spiritual pathway right here, and you're shifting your thought processes mentally to get in alignment, working with the mind to get out of your fucking head and into your heart so that you can merge this together. This is a real thing right now, guys, a real thing and a potent thing because all the answers are in our heart right here in our heart. If you are working on that and that's conscious in your awareness, you're purging the emotions, you're working through the emotions, you're doing the work, but you are not paying attention to the physical form. It is getting stuck right here in the physical body. Our body needs to move to purge energy. And some of you right now need to take the small actions to move it out. You need to go for walks. You need to do your yoga. You need to get to the gym. You need to go boxing. You need to have sex. Some of you need to have sex and you need to have an orgasm to release the energy. Guys, the portal way, especially for women to the womb, is this fucking amazing portal way. Now, if we look at this, now I'm not a sex therapist. I don't teach about sex. I do teach about embodiment of pleasure though. And it plays a role inside of that space because pleasure accelerates desire in our life, accelerates a vibration of energy so we can move through different dynamics. However, for the woman, it is a port away our womb. And when we have an orgasm, we are the highest connection to the purity of light when we orgasm through us. And it's actually a really key thing in manifestation that when you orgasm, if you drop into the desire of your life and you feel it and see it move through you as you're about to like come, that changes a vibration and collapses time quicker. But some of you guys haven't fucking orgasmed in forever. Let's let's, I don't care if you do it on your own, if you do it with your partner, although I'm sure your partner would appreciate it, especially if you haven't done that with them in a while, we need some orgasms. And if you are single, I'm not telling you to go have sex with a random guy, but maybe I'm telling you to go have sex with a random guy. If you need that connection, but within us, we have this possibility to move it through. Some of you need to come and you need to release for a man, which is a beautiful thing. They create seeds 
through their orgasm is a creation. And if you see it that way, as they come and as they orgasm, it moves through their body. They are planting seeds of creation, right? And not just in a physical form of like literally creating babies, but when they exert that, they are connected into their purity of light for creation, movement of things forward. So wherever you are on the spectrum, that might be something you want to take, but some of you guys are avoiding these small increments in your body. You are not leaning in to allow your body to purge the energy it needs to purge. Some of you need to just literally go have a sweat session or a cold therapy session. Speaking of which, I need to get my freaking, it's Monday, right? Yeah. I need to get my ice bath in alignment today to go do one because I need to start moving it through my awareness field and actually dropping into this more consistently. I had my, my mom bring a portable ice bath with her back from Canada, but I actually am going to be buying a freezer. And I just need to figure out, cause there's only one plug outside of this in this house. Oh, I think what I'll do is I'll run an extension cord. Okay. Anyways, back to the game plan, but I just got the download about how we're going to make this work without it looking like aesthetically, like all over the place with the freaking cord all over the place. But maybe you need some random, random calling thoughts right now. Maybe you need to do a cold plunge to move like some inflammation out of your body. You know what you need because the whisper has been coming into your ear. You've been hearing this move through your, your palate. You've been hearing it come into your space. You've been given the awareness, but you are not fucking doing it and you're not paying attention. Okay. Own it. Just fucking own it. Make a decision right now to make a shift. If this is the, the box you're working within, what needs to change for you? What needs to change for you? Yesterday, I went to yoga with some girlfriends and I am making sure now on every Sunday, I'm available to go to yoga with them because that is their thing. And I want to be a part of it because my body needs it. So on Friday, when my girlfriend messaged me, she's like, Hey, we're going to yoga on Sunday. Are you coming? I was like, yes, I'm coming. My body's like fucking rights. We're going, we need this. And I feel it today. I feel it. I feel it in my shoulders. Like the weight has been lifted from my shoulders. I feel it in my core. I feel my body today. I need, my body needs this release. And ideally I, it needs it more than once a week. The challenge I have is that I'm in mountain standard time. A lot of my clients are in Eastern time. Yoga is 9 a.m. my time, which means it's 11 a.m. Now we just don't go to yoga. We go to coffee afterwards. So I need to block off three hours, not including travel time in my day to be able to go to yoga and hold yoga that way. Can I do this? Yes, but I need to be more structured. And part of my next level of expansion and holding the money I'm, that's coming through my field to step in, to hold the people that will come with that money I need to be more structured in my movement of time within my day to have this movement in my life through my body. I have to, it's part of my next level strategy. So I will be blocking off times in my calendar to be able to do this. Now, I don't have a vehicle here yet in, Cal in California. I'm not even in California. That was like so five years ago, okay? When I lived in California, for those of you new to my world, I used to live there as well. I did a whole other experience there. That's a whole other podcast. Maybe I'll actually do a podcast on that because I learned so much uh, through that dynamic. And some of you are probably going through that exact movement of change right now in your field. So, okay, I'll write that down as a note. But I chose not to get a vehicle when I first got here. It's coming back into my field so that I have flexibility here. So I don't have to wait for someone else to go to yoga that I can align the dynamics. The gym is like a walk away. It's totally cool and different that way. But yoga isn't. It's like a 20 minute drive down the street or maybe 15. So holding that space for us. So guys, as you can see, I'm super transparent in the way that I show up for you. So I want you to feel what I am bringing out so that you can take what you need from this podcast and integrate it into your life right now and integrate it into the things. The next dynamic is some of you guys need to learn how to breathe. And I was working with a client this week and the simple task of dropping into silence and breathing is her major pillar because the second she integrates this awareness in her field and uses this tool, all the challenges become more diminished and she'll be able to hear, hear herself through this process, trusting her intuition, trusting herself, trusting her higher self, trusting God, trusting the surrendering of her soul. But right now she is in hustle energy and has lived in that. And back in the day, it was warranted. With the dynamics of her life and the, the pillars that moved through her and her 
responsibilities in life and the things she dealt with, it was warranted. And I'm not saying it wasn't, but she is at this pivotal change in her world right now, desiring to serve at the next level, desiring to have a more connected life within herself and her soul where it's not all hustle and stress and challenge, we'll say, quote unquote, and maybe that's not the right word, um, but that's what's coming through my field to speak to you at this moment of time. But she can have peace through the growth and have peace through the obstacle and have peace and understanding and being able to drop into the learning in real time because she's using her breath and her ability to breathe, right? A certain protocol dropped in that I served her with yesterday to be able to lean into this. So some of you need to learn how to use your breath to ground and then use that breath to step into your body to be present in your life. Because most of us have been conditioned and taught not to be present. Seriously, that is a North American thing. And literally, when we talk about the mechanism in the field that we're dealing with from a shadow dynamic side, they do not want you to be present in your life. Because when you are present in your life, you can actually hear yourself. You hear your intuition. Your third eye opens. You connect with your guides. You connect with your higher self. You actually understand the importance of this dynamic in your world. You get the higher levels of being. You get and understand why you're actually here on earth because you're paying attention. They don't want you to be present. They want you stuck in chaos. They want you in a world where you rely on other people. They want you to be literally diminished. 5G fucking energy, instant gratification on phones. They want you in that so they control you. Where when you get quiet, you remember that you are sovereign. You have everything you need within you and your purity of light will serve your mission and everything else is a distortion. And once we get to that point, guess what happens? We become free. And that's what they don't want. More people in their sovereign beings being free. Because if you are free, you are not relying on anyone. Therefore, you own your fucking power and you step into your truth every single day, knowing that that's your truth and you radiate that shit in the world. You are creating a ripple effect, my friend, and they don't want that in the mechanism. So when we are present in our bodies and we use our breath to breathe in and to expand, we can shift energy quickly. We can shift the emotions running through us. We can shift stress. We can drop into ourselves to find out why are we being triggered? Why do I desire to do this kind of exercise, to do this kind of action that is detrimental to my health, detrimental to my mind, detrimental to my relationship? And you get the answers in real time and you get it. It doesn't mean that you don't have to have courage though, which is another small piece that people need. Some of you guys need to fucking have some courage. You need to pick up and I call this like, and I love saying this, your big girl panties and put them the fucking fuck on and have some courage now to step into your life. Some of you guys need to have bold conversations that you are shit scared about. It's time. It's time guys. You are only holding yourself back by not doing this. You are only holding yourself back. Nobody else is holding you back. You are because you're not stepping into this and you're not owning it. And that small movement of courage, that small opening of the door, it goes boom. And all of a sudden it's like this massive shift, but you've got to step in. One of the other small movements we're working with now that is the one of the biggest potencies of change ever. We're learning not to lead with our mind and we're learning to drop into our heart. So instead of thinking our way out, you get present, you drop into your breath, and then you open up the heart and ask the question instead, because the purity of our light resides in our heart, our mission, our soul, everything is here. Our opening to the Akashic records, our sacred heart temple, our connection to our higher self, all of it is in our heart. So instead of thinking about it from a human perspective of how you've been conditioned to think, right? At young ages, they put us into school systems. And what do they do? We want you to think. We want you to think more. We want you to read more books and think more. We want you to think and think and think and think so that you forget that you have a heart that has all the answers and holds all the ancient knowledge in your heart. And you forget that you have it. And we want you to think about your fucking life instead of feeling about your life and trusting that movement. Hello, 
The whole infrastructure of our fucking world has been set up in this 3D mechanism to keep you fucking small. And it's these small movements of change that are going to shift things in your world. But you've got to bring them into awareness and you've got to now take the action needed to move this forward. If you are listening to this right now, it's game over time for you. Stop fucking around. Okay, have the grit in this energy right now to move it through. And guys, like I am speaking this into this podcast today, but I am also speaking this to myself. Like this is like me talking to me in the mirror. But you get to be a part of this and hear this because this is the conversation I had with, my, with myself this morning. Are you fucking ready? Wear your big girl fucking panties. I don't even wear panties. Okay, guys, just telling me that too. <laughs> like, you know, put on your freaking like helmet and hat and let's go. Like you've got, you are at a precipice of change, Colleen. It's right there. And everything that you've desired in your whole entire life is on the other side of this. It's right there. And yeah, will I be going through another pillar in another period of time? Will I have to go through growth there too? Will I have learning there too? Fucking yeah, I will. Welcome to the journey of being on earth and being a human. But guys, this one, and you know it, you know it. Right now, you know. Right now, you know. You know, and it's right there. It's right there. It's time to make a decision that your mission, your peace, your eternal flame, your vibration, your movement, my body's in goosebumps as I say this to you, is needed right now for you. And not even for anyone else that gets the blessing of being in your world when you are in that potency. Never mind your kids seeing you mother because of you are now in this potency of light stepping in changes the game. Your love relationship, you know, maybe one of the moves you need to make is leaving or releasing the current relationship that you're in. But calling in that next lover, that next person in your world, it's going to change your game of understanding because we are now moving into sacred union relationships. And some of you are in them already, and it's only going to get more potent and more connected. But some of you are calling them in. And this is where it gets magical. This right here, right now, that small change, even though it's large in its perspective, but you making a decision to make a shift can completely change the game in your relationship and how you feel love and how you are pleasured in love and how your desires are met and how you feel about expressing yourself in love. It all changes by one decision. You are one decision right now away. One, one, not five, not 50. One decision away from changing your whole entire life. You need to make that decision right now. Well, you don't need to do anything, but you have a choice and you have an option and you have an open availability to move through this. It's right there, guys, right there. It's calling you. It's moving through you. It's asking you to step into this. There's no longer a time to avoid. There's no longer a time to avoid. Everything is in you. Everything is in you already. It's now time to embrace it. So what I gave you examples, your small thing may be something different, but I'm going to ask you to drop into your heart, get out of your mind, get present in your body, ask yourself the question, what is it? And then start to move that through your field and take action. I guarantee you. And I want to hear about this guys. If this action, this small thing in your world changes something for you. I want to hear about it. I want you to DM me. I want you to put it in the comments. I want you to like write it as a review. Like I, I desire that for you to express it out into the world and own it. I want you to own it. I want you to be in it. And I want you to hold the power in it that you made a choice and you finally got over your shit. The cycle that you've been working within for like, for me, for 41, almost 42 years, my birthday is coming up in like less than a month, um, my 42nd birthday. So I will have 42 years around this amazing planet of experience. Yay for me. Um, but I tap into obviously all the ancient wisdom. So I don't feel like I'm 42. And for those of you that see me, you may be like, dude, you do not look 42. I do not look 42. You know, and I think the energies that work through my body consistently to serve you guys, that holds my body this way. Plus the choices I make for eating and food and taking care of myself and sleeping and, you know, all the dynamics of what we need to preserve our bodies, this beautiful vessel that we're in. 
So I want to say to you today, guys, we don't have to live in this chaotic world that we've been programmed to think is normal. We don't at all. We can choose to live in the light. And it doesn't mean that we won't be put up against darkness and we won't have to go into the shadow work and we won't have to have bold conversations. Fuck, it means that we have to have those consistently more probably than ever before. But we're not avoiding any longer and we're not diminishing ourselves any longer and we're creating boundaries and we're stepping into the space and we're connected and the relationships in our life change and the way we serve the world changes and our impact changes and the ripple effect we move through changes. And that's what's meant to really happen. This collective of energy being connected and in love and in energetic capacities that serve our soul and heart that we wake up every day and we breathe in peace. And it doesn't mean that we don't have challenges. It just means that now we're breathing in peace instead of stress. And we act differently and we hold differently and we lead differently. We lead our kids differently. We lead our clients differently. We lead programs differently. We lead lives that are different. And then we make a ripple effect. And now our neighbor starts to do the same thing because they see us and our clients start to do the same thing. Now, all of us in our own vibration and uniqueness, but it's that ripple effect. And you don't realize that this one small thing for you could be a massive movement in an energetic capacity in the world. But we are so conditioned to think so small and not realize that one decision can change your life. One, you are at a precipice right now in your world. One decision away from a massive change. When are you going to step in? I'm going to leave you guys with that today. Thank you so much for being here, listening to this episode. Tag me if you felt this. If something shifted in you while you listened to this, if you felt this moving through you, let me know. Because this for me is where I get lit up in all the movement and all the change and all the lights. So sending you lots of love today and sending you lots of courage. You got this. I believe in you. I believe in us. And I believe in the light. And I believe that your movement in the light will help shift someone else. Start to believe it yourself. And I'll see you guys again on the next episode.